the heartbeat of competition, the drama of the moment. This is NASCAR on Nick Blam Racing. The NASCAR Winston Cup Series has made its way from the Lady in Black to the last greatest coliseum known as Bristol Motor Speedway for the flag-to-flag -flag coverage of the Food City 500. Welcome race fans to the NASCAR Thunder 2003 Career Mode Gameplay here on McLam Racing. I'm your commentator and driver of the number 83 Napa Auto Parts Racing Machine for Team Chaos Racing, Mikey McLam. And we are fresh off one of the more heart-pounding races that occurred just one week ago, with the end result being our first career victory at Darlington. But speaking of first, we are looking for our, our first career victory here at Bristol, with our first time not being on the pole all season long. Will we have what it takes to fight our way to the front? We'll have to find out as the green flag is just moments away, so let's go trackside for the command and the starting lineup. Chevrolet. And rounding out 
the field is the 30 car. Originally, this was a low bank half mile. David Pearson won the first race on the high banks in the fall of 1969. Darrell's won here 12 times. Among active drivers, Rusty Wallace starting third, looking for his 10th Bristol win. DW, you better pay close attention. <laughs> you better reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. This is reality TV at its best. Okay, here we go. Pick it up. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, boys. All right, sir. First lap is complete here at Bristol for the Food City 500. The outside line did not go. We wound up getting into the back of Tony Stewart because of that. However, that may have been a blessing in disguise because we were able to get to the bottom very quickly. And, you know, this is old Bristol, so the bottom is the preferred line around here as opposed to the newer Bristol where you can kind of you know, run multiple lines, mainly just the top and the bottom. The middle, I guess, could work. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mike. Kind of. Sort of. Not really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Sorry about that, Mike. Kind of. Sort of. Not really. <laughs> I don't have any love laws for Mike for Mike Brown. I'm I'm just putting that out there. He's given me many problems, especially here at Bristol, in previous races. So I'm not I'm not all that concerned about being very clean with him. So if there is any ever rivalry in this game, it will probably be between him and myself, and probably Jamie McMurray as well. Oh, oh come on, Rusty! Come on, Rusty! You need to get up out of the way, buddy. All right. No damage from that contact. However, I do have some damage from the from the uh, hit with Mike Brown. I'm not gonna say contact because that was that's more than contact. But how about how about Steve Park? Steve Park up here, and like you had some, we got some other guys that are not nor normally up here. We got Nichols up here, one of the fantasy drivers. Michael Waltrip. Uh, I think that's. Ooh, Squeeze it down there a little bit. Um, yeah, I think that's the four up there as well. Excuse me, Mikey. Yeah, almost like Kevin LePage. But the four is up there as well. Uh, Ron Hornaday. We got some guys up here that are not normally up here running up front, and especially, uh, you know, at Bristol of all places. So. It's it's been some. Inch I want I want to know what happened during qualifying. <laughs> These guys put on some hot laps and they're not like you know falling back off the pace. We've also picked up ape spot since the uh, start of the race, so I just want to put that out there. But These guys are running up front. They're doing really well. They like I said, they haven't really fallen off. Got Chad Chaffin up here, I think, in the 16. Yeah. Oh no, we got a Smoker down below. And that looked to be Dale Earnhardt Jr. Oh, not entirely sure. Sorry about that, Ron. Sorry about that. I screwed that up. I was trying to see who that was down below and messed up my entry. <laughs> so we're going to get around Ron Hornaday. Work our way up into seventh. Use the apron a little bit to help us turn. Trying to trying to be patient, but also be aggressive. This is Bristol, after all, and I don't have any real qualms about screwing this car up because we're not bringing this car back at all. We are giving this car a new body and a new engine the second this race is over. So if we if we if we bang it up, we bang it up. But I don't want to mess it up so much that I, you know, wind up DNFing out of the race. That that's something we don't want. Yeah, I'm trying to be patient with uh, Jeff Burton here. Leaders gaining a couple tenths of a lap, but that's okay. That's because we're stuck behind uh, the 99 here. Ooh, little tap. I don't know. I'm like, okay, hey man, I'm ready to go. He got a better, better run off the turn that time. I couldn't really. 
Corona could really get the acceleration off the turn. Clip the wall a little bit there. But man, yo, <laughs> yeah, I give a shout out to Steve Park, man. He's doing his thing. Steve Park is doing his thing. I mean, honestly, if he if he wins this race, I'm I'm not gonna be mad at that. I am not gonna be mad at that. We are probably gonna drive our way into the top five here shortly. I'm just trying to be as patient as ah. Uh, okay. We got into the top five. <laughs> Not necessarily the way I wanted to, but uh, Burton slowed down a little bit more than I thought he was going to. Well, I guess than he originally had been, I should say. But yeah, we got the four. I believe this is Jeff Purvis in the four. Got Bill Elliott up here, Steve Park. Purvis about to take over the second spot away from Bill Elliott. He got to his inside. I'm going to try to get around Elliot here. But we're driving the heck out of this car. <laughs> okay, fuel is getting low. I am not sure when we're going to come down pit road because I'm a little nervous. All right, Bill, 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 Bill. Really, Bill? Is it? Well, man, bottomed out there. Oh, my gosh. Well... Yeah. <laughs> Rick you, Bill. <laughs> Bill Elliott, I owe you one. Don't worry about it. I'll get you back on the next go around. Yeah, that was not cool. That was not cool. I, I, I know I know it's AI. I know they're dumb and they don't know where they're going. But my gosh, man. They, they, they can't just come down on you while you're underneath of them. And he almost turned himself off my front. Yeah, I'm not I'm not giving you any... I'm not giving you any, any room, buddy. You, you're going to have to... You're gonna have to just stay on back there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and come down pit road. Let's try to avoid Kenny Schrader. Get down pit road, no problem. No changes to the car, it feels good. Car feels great, man. Oh, <laughs> despite all the damage that we obviously have, but I think that's mainly from hitting both Mike Brown and, uh, and Bill Elliott. No mistakes, guys. No mistakes. All right. Rear tire changer appears to have his act together now. So we're going to come out probably in the top 10. Maybe not. But we also got some guys that have not come down pit road. There's Steve Park. Steve Park was in the lead. So I'm not sure if he is still in the lead or not. We got Tony Stewart, who looks like he fought his way through that mess of a start. He took a little bit longer than we did. So I don't know where we are virtually on the track here, but I'm gonna we're gonna figure it out here shortly. Pit stops are still going down. Say so this appears to be guy he must be not on the lead lap here. Twenty eight Laps complete. Trying to be careful with these guys coming off pit road. Try to be a little bit more patient here. Come on, buddy. Oh man. <laughs> I wanna get down underneath of them, but I don't wanna I don't wanna be so overly aggressive here. <laughs> oh, can I get underneath of them? I did. Okay, we got there. In the top five, little contact with Steve Park there. Contact with the 125. Got Steve Park up the racetrack. Little bump and run action here at Bristol. Side by side, going into turn number three. We have the advantage on the bottom line. We're going to clear Steve Park off of four. Now we got Rusty Wallace, Jeff Purvis up ahead of us. Cannot see who is leading this race. If it's Dale Jarrett, I'm going to be a little bit miffed. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie about that. Two seconds to the leader. Plenty of laps to go. We got 17 laps to go as we... Oh, we're, we're down to backstretch. Uh, we're about to have 17 laps to go as we come to the line here. 
15, 5, 7. Okay. Putting down some fast laps here. I've got this thing cranked. Like the, if you get, oh my gosh. Okay, we got some trouble up ahead here. Ooh, contact with the four of Purvis. All right, looks like Jeff Burton is the leader here. Maybe we can get around him. That's one way to do it. <laughs> Little side action, new leader. <laughs> the 83. Oh, and then we immediately screw it up. Oh my gosh. Okay, new leader, the number two. And he gets the bump and run up the racetrack. We're going to go side by side off turn number four. Advantage to Rusty Wallace. Oh, oh. Drove it in a little bit too hot there. I'm sorry about that, Rusty. <laughs> but I'm I'm hungry. I'm going to try to give him outside as much as I can here. Allow him to fight back out there. All right. Advantage Rusty Wallace there. All right. That's light contact. I'm not worried about that one. It's just like when I slam into him, I'm a little bit con I don't want to do that. I don't want to rough him up too much. We got a big side-by-side -side battle with Rusty Wallace. I don't know how long he's going to be able to hang up here with us. So he's got Jeff Purvis to his inside now. How about this four car? <laughs> I don't know where the speed is coming from in this four car, but I think it's pretty awesome. It's good to see some guys running up front that don't normally run up here. And speaking of people running up front that don't normally run up here, how about me leading races here at Bristol? Leading races, leading laps. <laughs> leading laps here at Bristol, how about this? I'm protecting the heck out of this bottom right now. I'm going to do everything I can, but I don't think I can pull away from these guys. They're like right there on my bumper. Okay, I did beat my past, fastest lap. I'm not sure when I did that, but now I have a 15.53. Yeah, tires starting to go on the front a little bit. It's getting a little bit harder to get it rolled down. All right, watch out for Rusty. Rusty looking to the bottom. Got a little bit tight off the turn there. Rusty looking really low. He messes up the turn as well as we did. We were both kind of running that non-ideal line. We both shot up the racetrack. That now has trapped Rusty on the top lane. Oh, boy. Purvis is down low, man. We're doing everything we can trying to become the Department of Defense. Six laps to go. At Bristol Motor Speedway. Oh my gosh. And now the 99. Oh my gosh. Almost got turned off of the front bumper of the number four. But the 99 of Jeff Burton is back into the picture as well as Steve Park. We have a three car battle for the lead, possibly four. Four laps to go, side by side. Advantage to us off of turn number two, but here comes Rusty powering back on the outside. And on the apron, a little bit there to help us turn. We come up to cover, three laps to go. The number four car is all over our back bumper. Will he make an aggressive move to get around us? As we come off turn four, two laps to go. Purvis looks to the inside. We shut the door on them. They're side by side for second. Off of turn number four, white flag is in the air. One more lap to go here at Bristol. Can we hang on for our first career victory? Down the back straight away, we gapped him a little bit. Here comes Purvis. Purvis doesn't have a shot. We come off turn four. We take our first career victory at Bristol Motor Speedway. That's amazing. That is just amazing. Honestly, it, it what it probably boiled down to was that horrible start. If we didn't get the horrible start that we got. We may have not gotten to the, to the bottom as quickly. We may not have been able to make our way up through the field. 
as quickly. But despite all adversity, we were able to hold off Purvis and a hard charging Rusty Wallace to get our first career victory at Bristol Motor Speedway. And that is our Sunoco race winning moment. Not a single caution lap was run in the whole race. Well, that's good news for all these race teams because that can mean one thing, no major wrecks. The Napa car was out in front for most of the race. Yeah, no doubt he deserves the victory. What an incredible race for all the guys on that team. Until next time, everybody, this is Joe Moore along with Barney Hall saying thank you for joining us for today's NASCAR Winston Cup race. All right, guys, so here are the race results for the Food City 500 here at Bristol Motor Speedway. First career victory at Bristol, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Let's freaking go. Shout out to Jeff Purvis. Shout out to Jeff Purvis. This is probably the best run I've ever seen him have in this entire career mode. Second place. He could have got it. We blocked. He was right on our tail whole time. Bill Elliott comes in third. Rusty Wallace in fourth after putting up a heck of a battle. Heck of a battle, especially on the outside. Rounding out the top five is Jeff Burton. Six is Steve Park, who started on the pole, so good run for him. Mark Martin in seventh. Eighth is Tony Stewart. Ninth is Michael Waltrip. Another DEI up there. All right, so DEI looking pretty good, except for Dale Earnhardt Jr., who started all the way in the back for some reason. And rounding out the top ten is Mr. Danny Nichols in the 147 so let's go ahead and go through the rest of the field pick out your favorite driver oh hey you got mike brown up here almost in the top 10 almost in the top 10. uh jarrett made a quite a bit of a run there but let's go ahead and go through the, all the drivers pick out your favorite driver winner's purse for one hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars. no cautions 10 lead changes time of race at 1358 thereabouts average speed of 114.5 five miles per hour and the margin of victory 17 hundredths of a second my gosh it was it was close it was close it was down to the wire and it was down to not making any mistakes we had oh well Dale Earnhardt Jr. fell out of the race on lap 11 that was the smoker I saw down below I didn't didn't realize who that was while I was on the track uh, let's see we had that many cars finishing a lap down at Bristol what Lap traffic always played a factor at Bristol, which was surprising me, but everyone seemed to be having some decent pace here at Bristol. We were all spread out, but everyone seemed to have some good pace, which was, it's weird. It's weird to only have two cars finish, you know, finish the race one lap down here at Bristol. Usually there's like 15, 16, you know, of them. Uh, but like I said, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the heartbreak started 39th. Finish 43rd, blown engine on lap 11. All right, so here are the point standings after Bristol Motor Speedway, the Food City 500. How about it? 82 points, kind of getting us a little bit of an edge on the points lead. I don't know how that's going to work out after Texas. Texas is usually a tough track, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, but yeah, we are solidly in the points 82 ahead 82 points ahead of tony stewart who's in second third is dale jerry 86 points back fourth is sterling marlin 105 points back fifth is jonathan wolf 120 points back you have six is mark martin bobby labonte mike brown still up here in the top 10 my gosh <laughs> that they, they put him in that car and he took off man he took off that's awesome Dale Earnhardt Jr. falls to 9th, 214 points back, and Rusty Wallace rounds out the top 10, 220 points back. Let's go ahead and look at the awards for the week. First time we ever did not score a pole, but it went to Steve Park. He also led the most laps of the race, but not the most important one. That went, all, that went to us. We actually scored all charged up. 
Uh, I guess, yeah, we moved up 16 plot, 16 pl or 15 places, so uh, I guess, I guess. Not a lot of, not a lot of people changed hands during the race, I'm assuming, but we just had, we were on a tear. We were on a tear. That low downforce setup, man, it does, it does wonders for you. Uh, Jeff Burton actually had the fastest lap of the race. Danny Nichols with the, was the rookie of the race. Good on him. And he did finish in the top 10, I believe. Yes, he's right. And uh, the most exciting pass of the race, of the race. <laughs> Listen to me. Most exciting pass of the race goes to Rusty Wallace. And you know what? I'll give him that. I'll give him that. He, yeah, he definitely, he definitely did. Um, but unfortunately, he fell back later on in the race. Rookie of the Year still going to Mr. Wawa. Pole awards. We're now not the only one that's going to be ne in next year's Budweiser shootout. <laughs> For a while, it looked like it was just going to be me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, Steve Park finally... Uh, broke the pole record that we had, and we, we lost it by quite a bit. I mean, started all the way back 16th, no doubt. Uh, Dale Jarrett, Las Vegas winner. Uh, nothing changed there in the jackpot five. Chevy is now back in the lead. Uh, I think, actually, they were already in the lead last, uh, last week at Darlington. So now we are uh, eight points ahead of Ford. Um, followed by Dodge and then Pontiac, lap champion. We're back up at, at top in the top. 46 laps led on the season. Second, uh, second place is Mark Martin, 33. Steve Park with 23 laps led. Was a, he, he, was, he was doing good at Bristol. He was doing really good at Bristol. 19 goes to uh, Sterling Marlin, Dale Earnhardt Jr. with 14 laps led on the season. My gosh. <laughs> My gosh. Yeah, you know one of those things where it's just like, man, you, you, you drive your heart out. That was, I'll honestly be honest, that was more last week. I was more driving my heart out. Um, this one, that well, last week in Las Vegas, I was driving as hard as I could. This one, I wasn't driving as hard as I could, but I was trying so hard not to make a mistake. Because it's very, very easy to do that in these games. And with these guys breathing down your back bumper, it's so easy to just choke away a win. But we did it. We, we did it with minimal mistakes. I didn't... Uh, <laughs> it's one of those things when you go into a race and you don't really care about the condition of the car because you know you're not bringing it back. Like, that car is going to be completely... I'm getting rid of the chassis. I'm getting rid of the engine. I didn't worry. I didn't care about it. I didn't care if I blew it up, you know, <laughs> at the end of the race doing burnouts or whatever. Didn't care. So it was one of those races where it was just like, I'm just going to go in here and relax and have some fun. Patience got tried a few times. Had some issues with uh, Bill Elliott, but I think that's one of the things where, you know, it's, it's hindsight is 2020. Obviously, he was trying to come down pit road and I was there. He should not have tried to come down pit road at that particular time, but then, you know, I'm in the turn and suddenly he's dive bombing it underneath me and I'm like, all right, okay, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> so some uh, some issues I had with uh, with with Bill Elliott, no love loss with Mike uh, um, with Mike Brown. I'm not really, <laughs> I, I don't really, I don't really care to be <laughs> to be perfectly honest. But for the most part, that was a fun race and it it, it led to our first career victory. At Bristol, a lot of firsts. We had a first career victory at, uh, at at Darlington last week. First career victory here at Bristol. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. I mean, I'm gonna try to repeat it in the night race, but we'll just have to see how that goes. Because you know, like, you never know what's what's going to happen. You never know what's how the car is going to handle. But we had a rocket ship. And, you know, like where last year the the car was really, really difficult. It was really difficult to pass. And it still was once I got up to the guys that were competitive. But I was also trying not to knock them around too much. And if I felt like I was being held up for too long, then it's like, okay, look, you need to move. You need to get up out of the way. <laughs> so I put it, I was not afraid to lay the bumper to them. And like I said, a lot of that goes with not really caring too much about the condition of the car after uh we didn't we missed one of our sponsorship goals which was supposed to qualify in the top 15 we did not do that qualified 16th uh kyle petty took that away from us but it's okay it's okay because you know what i will take a win it's not where you start it's where you finish 
So next week's going to be Texas Motor Speedway. Texas Motor Speedway has always been tough. It's always been tough. Um, I believe I got a top 10 last time I was here in the fall, but it, it's always tough. I don't expect to win here at Texas. I'm going to do my absolute best, but I'm not expecting a win. If I get a win, great. If I don't, I'm just going to do my absolute best. Uh, you need horsepower here and to be competitive, and the cars don't separate like they usually do at other tracks, like, you know, like say, your Charlotte, your Atlanta, um, your uh, your Chicago land or whatever like they don't they don't separate they stay kind of clumped together so if you mess up you can lose instead of losing a couple spots you can lose five six seven eight spots real real quickly so uh, so we're just gonna try to do our best at Texas I'm getting ready to record that right after this but man thank you guys I hope you enjoyed the race I really do I hope you enjoyed the race man but thank you guys so much for tuning into the NASCAR Winston Cup series on McBlam Racing. If you enjoy these races, I do them every weekend following the NASCAR Cup Series. And is it the NASCAR Cup Series? Yeah, it's just the NASCAR Cup Series. I always forget. I don't know why I always forget. But yeah, it is the NASCAR Cup Series. But So leave a like on the video. Those help out a lot. Comment the hypeness down below. Uh, comment how much you enjoyed the race, whatever have you. But man, subscribe so don't miss a video click that bell notification because subscription don't mean a whole lot but if you click the bell it does at least notify you when i post a new video so once again thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you at texas